Welcome back to a new edition to Splash Mash Dash. It's been a while since I've posted a video. I want to apologize for that. Um, I've been a little bit busy with things going on here, but I'm getting back to Splash Mash Dash and, and getting more active and, and um, uploading new video, new content. Today's topic, main topic, is how to make a Garmin uh, workout for your fitness watch. I'm gonna go over that a little bit later, but before I get into that, I wanted to talk to you about me and things that, uh, updates about uh, myself and what I've been up to. The Kerrville Triathlon is approaching. It's uh, September 15th and Kerrville Tri is uh, September 30th, two weeks away. I'm really excited about that. I'm gonna be participating in the quarter triathlon. Um, I think that is gonna consist of a thousand meter open water swim, a 29 mile bike, and a 6.4 mile run. I feel really good about the first two events. I've made a lot of improvements in uh, the swim and the bike. The run, I've made a lot of improvements as well. However, with all this weather uh, recently in the rain, I haven't been going out to uh, do uh, outdoor runs uh, in the rain. I know that's not an excuse. I could have jumped on the treadmill at the apartment complex, but uh, to be honest with you, I guess I wasn't motivated to do that much running this month. So we'll see. Um, I haven't been doing a lot of long runs. Uh, I, that's what actually I'm um, heading out to do right now. I'm gonna meet one of my fellow triathlon team uh, members. We're gonna run downtown. It's, it's raining uh, right now, but I, I just need to get out there and do it. Another update, I registered for the Ironman Texas, the Memorial Herman down in Galveston, the 70.3. Uh, pretty excited about that. Um, that's a big jump for me. Um, but by the time that I will participate in that race, I will have been doing triathlon training for uh, right around a year. I feel comfortable about it for the most part, other than not swimming in salt water. Um, I might try and do that before the race just to try and get a sense of what that, that feels like. Uh, running improvements. My running improvements, I did a run assessment, I think uh, right at the end of July. I know that's a while back, but I wanted to run sub, uh, sub seven one mile assessment. I ran a 651. Uh, I was pretty, pretty stoked about that, especially with where I began. So I think about two years ago, I mean, I was struggling to run, you know, 10 minute mile pace. It's all about mind over matter. Um, you can do anything as long as you, you set your mind to it. Uh, let's see, what else? Cycling improvements. Uh, I've had a lot of cycling improvements recently. Not so much uh, with, I guess, my power or strength but my endurance has gone up uh, quite noticeably. I'm going out on rides that are longer, that are, that are harder, more fast paced. Um, and, and I feel, uh, I feel better at the end of those workouts than I did say in April. You know, I, in April, I probably jumped the gun and did a 60 mile bike ride too soon through the hill country. I, I think at, let's see, at mile 45, you can look at my data, I about just died right there. Just my pace just kind of just teetered off, boom. And the last 15 miles, I kind of just faked it till I made it. Now, uh, let's see, I did uh, last Friday, 40 mile bike ride, much faster than uh, I've previously done. The next morning I did a 54 mile bike ride and I felt great afterwards. In fact, I did a one mile run after. Open water swim. I I think the last time that I had talked to you guys, um, I was just getting into open water swimming uh, 
And uh, I can tell you, for for most swimmers, they're gonna have you're gonna have a difficulty in getting over that fear of being in in a lake or in, uh, well, maybe not necessarily a river, but a lake. Uh, you know, out in the middle of that lake, getting over that that fear that you're gonna drown. Of course, I use a swim buoy that I tether around my waist, but still, that fear is in your head, and it takes a little while to get more comfortable in the water and not to think about those things and just gain confidence um, and just to focus on your form and your technique let's see i got new shoes i got some um some on cloud shoes uh, quick review on that uh well just to give you a backstory i went to san antonio running company those guys there are great i, I highly recommend that store if you're going to go and buy some shoes here in san antonio um, they have very knowledgeable uh, staff members that will help you out and getting you the, the right shoe for um, the type of, uh, of, of foot that you have. I, I'm, I'm loving them so far. Uh, the pros of them, I can tell you right now, super lightweight, very comfortable, uh, very breathable uh, material that they're, they're, they're made of. Uh, the con very, uh, right off the bat that I can tell you it, is if you're going to be using these these shoes and uh, kind of like on terrain that maybe has a lot of gravel on the road, these aren't the shoes for you. Be just because the, the, the design on, on the, the, the bottom of the shoe, there's a lot of gaps that go uh, throughout the, uh, the rubber material, um, which creates that, that area where those, those, those pieces of small rocks or gravel can get lodged in there and pretty much forces you to stop running to just dig out a rock. It's not something that you want to happen in the middle of a race. But they're great shoes. Um, if that's not an issue where you like to do your, your run routes, I would highly recommend the, the OnCloud shoes. Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head. I, I, I believe they run uh, $130, um, but they're, they're, uh, they're a great shoe. Um, let's see, new power meter. Uh, I can't remember if I talked about that in the last video. I got a Quark D0 from Bicycle Heaven, col the Colonnade location. Um, absolutely is a must if you're going to take on cycling from being a hobbyist to something more serious and you want to start working on your, your bike fitness, you have to get a power meter. What it does is it'll gauge how much power output. So if you start doing bike workouts to where it says, okay, you need to be doing uh, zone three for, you know, eight minutes and then rest in zone two or zone one for four minutes. You're not going to know how to do that. Um, you're going to have to do it just based solely on feel and feel is not very accurate, especially whenever you start getting into, uh, you start taking in, in, in other environmental factors such as terrain or, or wind, headwind, tailwind. That's gonna throw you off in, in, in how you are trying to figure out, okay, I'm, I'm putting out this percentage of effort. Um, that's why power meters are um, an invaluable tool to add to your your uh, inventory. Cork D0, I highly recommend it. It is amazing. I've never had any issues with, uh, as far as its accuracy, it's been dead on. I've never had any strange power numbers at, at the end of a workout. Um, it is a, uh, a crank style uh, power meter. If you were to have uh, power meters that are in the pedals, the pedals could possibly break if, uh, let's say you, you, uh, you, you drop your bike or you have an accident and uh, you know the, the crank base like Cork D0, it's not gonna break. The, those power pedals, it might, it might affect those pedals and you know I'll be honest with you guys uh, I had a spill day zero as soon as I got my bike out of uh, bicycle heaven who installed that I I had a little accident on my bike um, had I not gotten purchased the cork d0 and went with uh, some power pedals I probably would have broken my my setup so that that shows you right there anything can happen you can't plan that stuff which is why I wanted to spend more money on on a power meter that was crank based that's that's about it thanks for for checking back in with me 
and I'll just go ahead and get right into it. All right, first thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna sign in. So you need to go up to the top, click on sign in, enter in your login, okay? Go over to where it says training on the left side, either click the down arrow or on the letter, uh, the word training. Okay, click on workouts. All right, once you get to this screen, you're gonna need to first select what type of workout you're going, going to create. For this example, we're gonna do run. Then you can select create a workout. Before that, it's all grayed out until you select your type of workout. Click on create a workout. Um, go up to where the pencil is, which will edit the title. We're gonna do splash, mash, dash, example, run, workout. Hit the little green check. Okay, warm up. Uh, the first step is the type of step. You've got warm up, run, recover, rest, cool down, other. Um, we're gonna, for this example, leave it on warm up. All right, select your duration. You've got a couple of options. You got time, distance, lap button press, which is that uh, on most of the watches, the bottom right, or the, uh, it looks like a, a reverse line. Um, calories, heart rate. Um, for this example, we're gonna do time, okay? Then add more. This is where you would wanna put in um, the intensity target, okay? So for a lot of people that use the heart rate zones, okay, you're gonna need to go in and set that up and in, in, in your Garmin Connect your, your heart rate zones. But uh, a more accurate way is to do a run assessment, get your threshold pace count, which sets up your, your pace zones, okay? So for this example, we're gonna do pace, okay? So let's say you know that your heart rate zone two is, let's say, uh, Oops, 9.05 to 10.15. Oop, I messed up again. 10.15, okay? Let's say that's zone two for you. We're gonna select the duration, five minutes, okay? We're done with the warm up now, okay? We're gonna go down to run. Let's say we want to run for a distance of 3.5, we're gonna have to clear that out. 3.5 miles, we'll leave it on miles even though we can choose kilometers or meters, okay? Uh, intensity target, let's say we wanna do, um, let's say we know our run pace zone is, let's say it's zone three, so it's a little bit faster of a pace zone, 750 to let's say uh, eight, 45 okay uh, cool down let's say cool down let's do distance um, let's say instead of miles um, we want to do meters which is completely fine if you want to mix and match let's say 800 all right add more um, cool down um, let's say we want to do it the same as our warm-up that same pace uh, 905 to 1015 Okay, um, and it's really, it, that that's it, guys. So now, there's a couple of other things where you can add a step. Let's say you wanna click, um, click on that. You can drag over here on the left side, move it over, uh, cool down. Um, and let's say like you wanna do another one where like it's a little bit slower speed. You know, you can go through, um, select distance, put in one mile, Whatever, make make it another zone, okay? Or let's say like you wanna work on your cadence for one mile. Um, and let's say you wanna keep it like 175 to 180. You can do that, all right? Um, let's just go ahead and delete that. Let's say you wanna do a repeat. So like add a repeat means like if you're doing splits, if you're doing um, sprint efforts, okay? which is very common in run workouts. So first thing we would need to do is um, move this up. So this gray bar area, that's the whole repeat. So click and drag it over the run, okay? Because typically you do your, your, your sprint efforts before you do your long run. Um, you can do the plus minus sign to 
um, repeat four times, five times, whatever it is. Uh, run, let's say it's a distance. Okay, let's say it's 100 meters. Okay, let's say intensity target. Let's say you wanna do it, um, let's say uh, you wanna be doing um, let's say zone three efforts, okay? Or let's say faster than that. Let's say like you, your build up acceleration, okay? So just keep it simple. Oop. Okay, let's uh, change it to, just leave it at intensity target. Let's just leave it alone. Uh, 100 meters, uh, recover duration, time, distance, let's do time, um, 30 seconds, okay? Recover, leave it alone, all right? You can go he up here, hit save workout, okay? It'll prompt you and says your workout has been saved. Next thing you're going to do is send it to your device, okay? Click send to device. You want to make sure that you have the right device selected. Click send now. This is going to prompt up another window and it's going to say, do you want to allow this page to open Garmin Express? Garmin Express is free software that you should have already downloaded. Um, if you haven't, just go to the Garmin website, download it. It's free. Um, let's just go ahead and assume you've already done those steps. Click on allow. That's going to pull up the Garmin Express screen, which is telling me to plug in my device. Um, since this is kind of just like an example, I'm not going to do that. You would normally, what you would do is that little USB cord that came with your watch, um, plug it into there, um, in your computer, and then it'll start to, um, sync it. Okay. Sync with your watch. So let's go ahead and assume that occurred. All right. And go back to the Garmin Connect website. All right. Um, all right, so let's say it's already synced that way. Um, so what we can do is now we can go to, um, there was another screen here. Where was it? We can go to workouts. Okay. Um, go ahead and find it here. There it is. Splash mash dash. Um, let's say you backed out of that screen and you didn't send it to your, your watch. Um, you can come over here, those little up down arrows that will send to your device. Okay. You can click on the calendar and that will, um, prompt you to, let me move my phone real quick. You can, um, save it to add it to your calendar. Okay. Um, what that does is then it prompts up a little calendar date. Let's say it's tomorrow's workout. Boom, workouts have been scheduled. So then what you're gonna wanna do, sorry for the shaky camera, is go over to your calendar and it'll show up right there in yellow. Splash, mash, dash, example, run. Um, it shows up on your calendar. However, you need to still sync up your calendar with your watch. So the little three dots on the top right, click on that. Send workouts to your device. Okay, one workout will be sent, send it. Um, what you're gonna wanna do again is make sure that your Garmin device is um, plugged into your computer through the USB cord, all right? Um, so that's how you do it on your computer. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the next video on how to do it on your phone. It's pretty simple. Uh, most phones have the same layout. So this is your home screen. What you're simply going to do is go to more, the bottom right, click on that, find your workouts, click on workouts. Okay, these are all my existing workouts. You can see that it already synced up the, the workout that we created on the computer. Um, but I'm going to walk you through how to do this on your phone. So what you would do is that plus sign on the top right, click on that. Okay, create a workout, select run. Okay. We're going to um, do the same thing, okay? We're just going to do warm up, select that, okay? Um, go down to duration type, 
we're going to do time. Scroll over to time. Okay. So once it does that, it says set duration below that. Click on there. We're going to scroll this to five minutes. Um, intensity, you can turn it on. And then you can select your intensity target type. Um, we're just going to keep it simple, do heart rate zone. Select, to, let's say, like zone two. Okay. Um, once that's um, all edited, click on the top left, that little back blue arrow. It's going to go back. Okay. We're going to now uh, click on run. All right. We're going to do, let's say, duration type. Uh, we're going to leave it on distance. All right, we're going to set duration. We're going to do 3.5 miles again. Okay. Hit done. Intensity target on. Uh, target type. We're going to do pace this time. Set target. We're going to do from, like, let's say, just make this up. 750 to... Eight. Let's say I want to make it real tight, real tight kind of an intensity target. Okay, so the reason why we would do that is just so, like, let's say you have a problem maintaining a steady pace. Um, most watches, Garmin watches, do increments of five seconds. Um, so, you know, putting in 809 wouldn't really do you much help, or 808. Um, doing an even number, um, this gives us enough leeway. I mean, let's make it even a little bit tighter. Let's do 805, okay? Any tighter than that, your, your, your watch is going to just be buzzing constantly on your wrist. But the 15-second window is really good to maintain a steady pace, okay? <clears throat> um, hit the blue back arrow, okay? Uh, let's say, like, let's add a repeat. Click on add a repeat. Change that to four times, okay? Uh, run, set duration. Let's say zero meters. Let's say 100, actually 100 meters. Scroll over. Oh my gosh. 100. Okay. Intensity. Let's keep it simple. Normally I'd do pace, a pace zone. Let's just do heart rate zone. Let's say heart rate zone five. Okay. Hit the blue back arrow. Okay. Um, once that's all done, I mean, I would go over here to recovery, sorry. Um, time, three minutes. Let's change that to 30 seconds. Sorry, I'm kind of in a bit of a hurry. All right, blue back arrow. All right, see how our cooldown is in the wrong spot um, and the run repeat is in the wrong spot. Let's go ahead and grab it in the, the three slash line or the hamburger. Oh, nope, maybe. Where can I click and hold? Just click and hold anywhere on the top of that little area and you drag it up, moves it over. Okay, now we're in the, the right order. Okay, so now we go up the top right, everything looks good. Hit save, change our run workout name. Let's shorten it down SMD uh, run example. Hit save. It's saved. Okay, so now what we what you would want to do on your phone, you still got to send it to your device. So you want SMD run example. Okay, that little icon or it looks like a phone with an arrow pointing to it. You want to click on that. Select the, your device. If you have multiple devices, make sure you're sending it to the right one. I have an Edge 1030. I don't want to send it to that. I want to send it to my 400 235. So I click on there, hit send, and it would send it. It would say, yeah, your workouts will be sent uh, to your Garmin device next time you sync. So what you do in order to force it to sync, sometimes it'll do it automatically, but I do this as a precaution. See, it's already syncing. Let's say it doesn't do that. Let's say your, your Garmin app is acting a little funny. I would go click on that little watch icon, okay, the top, and then I say sync now, okay? That's all you would normally need to do. Sometimes the Garmin app is running a little bit funny and it doesn't want to sync. So what you would want to do is kill your app, reopen it, and then just repeat that, that step right there where you manually sync your, 
your uh, watch with your workouts. Okay, so I'm gonna start the another separate video showing my watch. Okay, you made it to the last step of this tutorial. All right, so the last thing you're gonna do is confirm that the, the workout is on your watch. So what you're gonna do is you, what you normally do, you click on the little uh, running man, okay? That'll open up your screen. I'm already on run. If you need to navigate to run, you just click the up arrow for activities. Find the run on there, select it, okay? Hit the down arrow for the menu, okay? All right, activity settings, we don't want that. We wanna go down to training, okay? All right, it would be under my workouts. However, in that tutorial, um, remember where I showed you, you put it on a calendar date? That's where you would wanna go if you made it a scheduled workout, okay? Um, but we're gonna go to my workouts to keep it simple, you just click on here, my workouts, hit the running man to select. Okay, nope, that's not it. Just scroll down until you find it. Where is it at? SMD run example, there it is. Okay, there's the other one that we made, splash, dash, mash, um, whatever that long title was. Let's just go to SMD run example. Okay, you just hit the select button. Okay, you would normally do do workout. Let's just view it first time. Six steps. Warm up. You press the down arrow to scroll through. Run, mine's, um, runs 0 0.006. Cover 30 seconds. Okay, this is the, uh, the splits. Okay, repeat that four times. Run 3.5 in that pace zone. So what it'll do is, if you run too fast or too slow, it'll say that too fast or too slow and it'll vibrate on your wrist. So that's why these workouts are an invaluable tool to have. Um, it keeps you on pace. Cool down until lap press. Lap press is this button right here and that'll stop your workout. Okay. Uh, let's back up. All right. Do workout using run. Wait for it, wait for the screen to go. All right, to begin, you hit that button right there, the little running man. And that's it, guys. It's real simple, too easy.